In this video, I want to have a look at applications of integration, so area and volume problems, involving trigonometric functions. So our first example asks us to find the exact area bounded by the curve y equals cos 3x, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals pi on 12. So to find the area, we're going to take the integral between our two bounds, so 0 and pi on 12, of our function, so cos 3x with respect to x. Now if we do that we know that sine differentiates to cos so that means that cos is going to integrate to sine but we just need to remember to have our one third out the front because of that 3 in there. So we're going to have a, a third sine 3x and that's going between pi on 12 and 0. Then we can substitute in like we normally do so we'll have a third sine now if I replace x with pi on 12, then 3 times pi on 12 is going to give me pi on 4. Then I'm going to have minus 1 third sine of 0. Now pi on 4, that's um, 45 degrees. So we're going to look at our special triangle on your formula sheet, which has 45 degrees in both of those corners. It's got a 1, a 1, and a square root of 2. So that means a sine of 45 degrees, or pi on 4, is 1 on root 2. So we're going to have a third times 1 on root 2. Um, and then we're going to have minus a third times sine of 0. But we know from our graph of sine, that looks like this, that sine of 0 is 0. So that whole second term cancels itself out. And we're going to end up with 1 over 3 root 2. If we rationalize the denominator of that, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom. Oops both by the square root of 2, and we'll end up with the square root of 2 over 6 units squared for our area. The second example is a volume question. It asks us to find the vol exact volume of the solid formed when we rotate the curve y equals the square root of sine 2x about the x-axis between x equals 0 and x equals pi on 6. So we need to know that our formula for volume is pi between a and b, so our upper and lower bounds, of y squared dx when we're rotating around the x-axis. So that means for ours we're going to have pi between 0 and pi on 6. Our y is this whole square root of sine 2x. So that means that y squared is just going to be sine 2x. And that's with respect to x. Now when we integrate our pi is going to stay out the front. Um, sine integrates to minus cos. So we're going to have minus a half cos 2x, and that's between pi on 6 and 0. Then we can substitute in, so I have pi outside of minus a half cos. Now 2 times pi on 6 will give us pi on 3. And then we'll have minus, minus, so I'm going to change that to a plus, a half cos of 0. Now cos pi on 3, pi on 3 is 60 degrees, so again using one of our special triangles, 60 is here, 30 is up here, we've got 1, 2, and root 3. So this is going to give us pi outside of minus a half times cos of 60 degrees is a half. Plus, and if we look at cos of 0, we know that our cos graph looks like something like that. So cos of 0 is 1, so we're going to have a half times 1. Now simplifying that, we're going to have pi outside of minus a quarter plus a half, and I've run out of room so I'll just put it over here, minus a quarter plus a half is a quarter, so we're going to end up with pi on 4, and that's units cubed because we're talking about volume. Our last example is jumping back to area, but it is a more complex area question. So it's asking us to find the points of the intersection of the curves y equals cos 2x and y equals sine 2x between 0 and pi, and then it's asking us to find the area that's completely enclosed between the curves in that interval. So the first thing we're going to do is to find those points of intersection and we're going to solve these simultaneously. So we're going to have sine 2x has to equal cos 2x and we want to find out the values of x where that happens. So I'm going to divide both sides by cos 2x. So we'd end up with sine 2x over cos 2x over cos 2x and sine over cos we know is 10. So we're going to have tan 2x equals 1. 
Now we can solve this if you ignore this 2x for a second, if we think of it as say tan theta equals one instead, so we've gone let theta equal 2x, then we can solve this using one of our um, special triangles. So we've got our right angle, we know that it's 45, 45, 1, 1, root 2. And we also need one of our diagrams, so we've got all stations to central. Now we know that tan theta equals 1, so that's positive, so we're either going to be in this quadrant or this quadrant. And we know from this triangle that our special, oh sorry, our related angle is pi on 4, because 45 degrees is um, opposite over adjacent, so tan of 45 degrees is 1, which is what we wanted, and 45 degrees in radians is pi on 4. So that means here we're going to have theta is equal to either pi on 4, or down here, this would be, because we've come all the way around to pi, and then an extra pi on 4, that would be 5 pi on 4. But we didn't have theta to begin with, we had 2x. So we're going to replace that theta with a 2x, and then we have to continue solving for x. So that means that x is going to equal pi on 8 or 5 pi on 8. So these are the x coordinates of our points of intersection. We just need to double check that these two um, x coordinates do lie within our domain between 0 and pi, which they do, so we're okay there, but you always need to double check. So now we can use these two co x coordinates as our upper and lower bounds in our integral. So to calculate our area now, we've got the integral between pi on 8 and 5 pi on 8. And then we need to figure out what our function is. So to do that, we're actually going to sketch these two and see which function is on top and which one's below so that we know which way to subtract them. So, oops. so we're going to sketch our two curves. So in red, I'm going to do cos 2x. Um, now, cos x usually goes has a period of 2 pi, but because it's cos 2x, it's going to have a period of pi. So I'm going to draw in pi on 2, pi on 4, and 3 pi on 4 as our sort of key points. So cos starts at 1, it's going to go down through here and then back up to 1 over this side. And then sine we know starts at 0, goes up to 1, back to 0, down to minus 1, and back up. So the points of intersection that we just found are here and here. So what we're finding is this area in here. So that means that our cos function, sorry, our sine function is on top. So we're going to have sine 2x minus the function underneath, which is our cos 2x. And we're integrating all of that with respect to x. All right, so if we go through and do that, sine 2x is going to integrate to minus half cos 2x and this is going to integrate to a half sine 2x and that's between 5 pi on 8 and pi on 8. I'm going to go through and substitute that in. So we're going to have minus a half cos. Now if I put 5 pi on 8 in here because it's two times, we'd have 5 pi on 4 minus a half sine of that same 5 pi on 4. And then we're just going to subtract and we're going to substitute in our pi on 8. So I have minus a half cos of pi on 4 because 2 times pi on 8 is pi on 4 minus a half sine of pi on 4. All right, so it's looking a bit messy now, but we can go through and use our diagram to figure these out. So our 5 pi on 4 is down in this quadrant down here and our related angle is pi on 4 and we need our all stations to central. So we know that sine and cos are both going to be negative down here so that means we can simplify this bracket here. So because cos of 5 pi on 4 is equal, it's equivalent, it's equal to cos minus cos of pi on 4 this is going to become positive a half cos of pi on 4. Now sine is also negative there, so this is going to be plus a half sine pi on 4. And this bracket's going to stay the same for now, but I'm going to expand out this negative. So we're going to have plus a half cos of pi on 4 plus a half sine pi on 4. 
Now, before I'm going to get rid of these brackets here because they're not doing anything. Before I go through and actually figure those out, I'm going to simplify that because I've got a half cos pi on 4 plus a half cos pi on 4. So that's just going to be cos pi on 4 plus, and then I've got the same thing with my sine. So we're going to have plus sine pi on 4. Now we know from our special triangles, so looking at our one with 45 degrees, because pi on 4 is 45 degrees, got 1, 1, root 2. So cos pi on 4 and sine pi on 4 are both 1 on root 2. So we're going to have 1 on root 2 plus 1 on root 2, which would give us, and I've run out of room, hang on, that's going to give us 2 on root 2. But if we rationalise the denominator, that would give us 2 root 2 over 2, which will give us a final answer just of root 2, and that's units squared for area. So that's having a look at applications of integration when we've got trig functions.